All right, so today we're going to talk about PS5 and SSD. So last month I did talk about this Battlefield 2042 SSD, which is a really good deal. I think it was 100 bucks for 500 gigs. You get a M NVMe M.2 SSD. And I was unsure if this would work with the PS5. And yeah, that mystery has been debunked by Digital Foundry. I'll get around to that uh, later on in this video. But basically, uh, Sony has finally unlocked the ability for us to install an NVMe M.2 SSD. That's a mouthful. So before we couldn't put PS5 games anywhere unless it was onto the internal SSD of the PS5 because of the load times and read speeds and, you know, the more performance-y stuff. Adding the NVMe M.2 SSD is not extremely difficult. Sony has even given us this cool fancy short animated graphic rendering thingy to display an SSD being installed onto the system. But of course, most of us were mostly distracted by the transparent PS5 concept that was being shown off in the video. It even sparked my curiosity and I ended up looking some stuff up on Amazon. Wow, it's actually a real thing. So there are some specifications that your SSD has to meet in order to be sort of on par with the internal PS5 SSD. So off the top of my head, I know that your SSD has to be Gen 4. So Generation 4, PCIe, whatever that whole description thing is, that's something that I remember. And it needs to be at least 250 gigs and up to 4 terabytes of storage. It needs to be at least, they're saying at least. 5500 megabytes per second of read speed and it absolutely needs to have a heatsink. There are more specific details that you should probably know about so here's an informational chart displaying those requirements more specifically from PlayStation's official website. If you'd like to reference this page I will leave a link in the description below. So it's quite a bit and if you get lost at any point just know that you can reference the official site or you can come back to this video. Who remembers the good old days when you could just slap on a memory card onto your PS2 and you were good to go? Like, why can't it be that easy? I'm absolutely not going to remember this next part, so I'm just going to read off of what I wrote because this video, I came up with all of the points I wanted to hit while I was away from my setup, so I just wanted to remember everything I needed to talk about. Anyway, I recently made a video on the Battlefield 2042 SSD that I had mentioned before. In that video, I did wonder if this SSD would work with the PS5. And at the time, there was no confirmation whether or not it would work. Technically, it's not supposed to work because if I can find it somewhere on here, I don't know if it says it on here, but if I remember the numbers correctly. Oh, here it is. The read speed on this, or the write speed, the read speed is 3600 megabytes per second. PlayStation's asking for 5500, which this is way under. So there is a super in-depth video that Digital Foundry did comparing the SN750 to the supported PS5 supported SN850, so I suggest you guys check that out because think about it, you can actually score a pretty good deal and get a working SSD for your PS5 while getting the Battlefield 2042 code. Yes, this comes with Battlefield, and no, it doesn't come with the PS5 code, it's for PC. I had a lot of questions about what the code was for in the last video because it had PS5 in the title. So the SN750 is not going to perform nearly as good as the SN850, but it the, the difference is not really that bad unless you're copying stuff from the SSD to the internal storage and moving things back and forth then that's when the read and write speeds get a little bit funky and you you got all types of wait times. Digital Foundry literally shows uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart running on this SN750 that I just have right here and it plays just fine so I think that's actually really good and you'll probably save a lot more money if you don't go for an SN850. Me personally I don't have my Battlefield 2042 SN750 SSD M.2 NVMe installed <laughs> onto my PS5 right now because I really don't need the space. I don't mind deleting stuff and making room because I mainly play my games on the computer. I have three SSDs in my computer and one of them being that Battlefield 2042 one. So I think it's going to stay there for now. And if I wanted to, I could reformat it and put it in the PS5 and play Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart like they showed in the Digital Foundry video. They're not always going to sell the SSD with the heatsink. You can actually buy the heatsink separately on Amazon, which is what a lot of people are doing because you can actually find a cheaper SSD and just pair it with a cheap Amazon heatsink. Some of them will come with the heatsink already installed. 
like the SN850 gives you an option to buy it with or without it. And if you want to save yourself the trouble from doing it yourself, then you can just buy it with it already installed. But yeah, they're absolutely stressing that you use a heatsink with this unless you want your console to like melt off your desk or something like that. But yeah, use a heatsink. There's already test somewhere on YouTube probably of people burning stuff with their PS5 SSDs. Preferably follow PlayStation's uh, guidelines or requirements, specifications on what they want you to have in there so that in the long run you don't have any issues. Because even though this works right now, most of the games, you know, probably aren't using the SSD or the speeds to its full potential. So over time you might see if you are using an older SSD that it might not work in the future. Who knows what can happen, but yeah, preferably follow their guidelines and you should be set. Who knows, maybe PlayStation will update their guidelines to support less uh, powerful SSDs like this one, 3600 to 5500 is actually a big difference. And what's even weirder is that in the Digital Foundry video, it doesn't even say that it runs at 3600 megabytes per second. It says like 5100. So I don't know what's going on internally with the PS5, but it's not reading the numbers correctly. So I'm sure we're going to start seeing a lot more SSDs that support the PS5's demands and their current requirements. But hopefully this video helps somebody out. I will leave the links in the description below. I will even leave a link to this awesome Battlefield 2042 bundle that they might as well sponsor me because I keep saying how great of a deal this is. Anyway, that's it for this video and I will see you guys on the next one.